In this video, we'll talk about reactive arthritis, how it presents, and when you have to think about it, and how do you treat it. So, first of all, reactive arthritis is a very rare disease. You barely see a case or two in your lifetime career. Now, the triad that we all know, conjunctivitis, urethritis, arthritis, these are rarely or few of the patients who have them all together, so you can't rely on them, to be honest, to diagnose these patients. Well, when do you think about reactive arthritis? If the patient has oligoarthritis, which is around two to three joints involved, and mainly in the lower extremities more than the upper extremities. Now, when you ask the patient in the review of system, they will mention to you that they have been having red eyes, which is a sign of conjunctivitis, of course, and as well, they might mention to you, to you that around two to three weeks ago, they had dysuria or diarrhea, which are the predisposing or the risk factors for developing reactive arthritis. What you need to know here is the timeline. It's around two to four weeks before the symptoms start. They will mention to you that they had genitourinary tract infection or gastrointestinal infection. Now, reactive arthritis is a diagnosis of exclusion, so you need to rule out other diseases that can look alike. And here we are talking about ankylosing spondylitis, and we can rule this out by doing pelvic x-ray of the sacroiliac joint to see if they have signs of ankylosing spondylitis. And if the patient has effusion, then you need to do erythrocentesis, gram stain culture. Now, if the patient mentions you need to urinary tract infection before, then you have to rule out gonococcal infection by doing the nucleic acid amplification test. And that's important to remember, gonococcal genitourinary urinary tract infection does not predispose to reactive arthritis. They are actually a separate entity. They cause gonococcal arthritis. The genitourinary urinary tract infection that causes reactive arthritis is mainly chlamydial infection. And know which bacteria causes reactive arthritis versus gonococcal arthritis. Now, if these are negative, then at that point you can say, well, the patient likely has reactive arthritis. Now, a potential question, if the patient now diagnosed with reactive arthritis and you rule out gonococcal arthritis, do you need to test for possible GI infection and the chlamydial GU infection? And the answer is no. Do we need to treat them? The answer, only if they are symptomatic. If the patient mentions to you that two to four weeks they had symptoms of GI or GU infection, then you don't need to treat these unless they are symptomatic now. And here we are mainly talking about genitourinary tract infections, not the GI infections, because GI infections usually we don't like to treat them, we just use supportive management, especially if they have a bloody diarrhea. And the treatment for GU infections, azithromycin or doxycycline. Now, for the arthritis itself, what do we do? NSAIDs, is the first line. If that fails, then you can do injection steroids. And if that fails, then you can do systemic steroids with P or IV steroids. That's it for reactive arthritis. Hope you guys learned something and see you in the next one.